Okay, it's the end of the session. This is the roadmap for Roman, Raya, and Daisy. We primarily worked with Roman, who is a very fearful dog, uh, fearful of people he doesn't know. Now, he also has a mega esophagus, which is when the esophagus is larger than the lid that sits over it. Um, our bodies close the lid when we want to burp and to keep uh, gases and uh, stuff from coming up uh, out of our stomach. Since dogs eat with their nose down orientation, if you treat a dog with a mega esophagus with their nose down, a lot of times the acid and stuff will come up it can burn their uh, throat and cause damage. Also, if you have a dog with a mega esophagus, you should not be wearing a collar around the neck. You should be using a harness. So I point that out to the guardians here um, and I'd recommend that they get, I like an easy walk harness. There's a number of different types of harnesses. Um, for dogs that wiggle and get out, uh, you might want to have one that's more secure. I have one that uh, goes around uh, the shoulders here and then there's, it goes around the chest here. So there's a couple of points of contact. Uh, but really you just want to make sure that it's not uh, impacting the trachea or you know the throat area because that's going to make it worse. Um, all right, so um, basically we start off, um, and remember for this, uh, when you have guests come over to work on these things, I want you to meet outside. Inside, the dog can really focus on one thing it's really worried about. So what you wanna do is whenever you're meeting new people, remember set the dog up for success by exercising it, but have the people sitting outside in your front lawn and have you have some of that Stewart's beef liver. And so what you do is you give a big chunk of uh, the beef liver with the nose up for the megasophagus dog. And then we open the door and the dog comes out and sees the people, but it's got this wonderful treat in its mouth that it's already in a pretty good mood. Come outside, tell it to sit, or if it wants to sit, that's so fine. Uh, but then you give it another piece of treat uh, and then you walk towards your guests. Your guests should be turning, have their back to you. So you're leading the dog up to their backside. Now you need to make sure that your dog, uh, if you're watching this as other, someone other than Roman's guardians, Roman is just very nervous. Uh, but if some dogs are nervous and aggressive and they'll bite th people from behind. So if you're gonna do this technique, you need to make sure that you're watching and safeguarding your guests because they're not gonna be looking if they're doing it right. So the idea for this is um, uh, the dog approaches on its own free will. It gets a sniff, it gets to interact as much as it wants. It gets some treats along the way from the guardian, um, but then it gets to make all the decisions. So I don't feel worried about these people because they're not reaching to pet me. They're not looking at me. They're not trying to talk to me. Oh, what a good pretty dog you are. The person should completely ignore the dog whatsoever. And what you want to do is lead him up to the dog, uh, to the dog up the person from behind and let the dog sniff as much as he wants. Um, now you can set him up for success by if the, the, your helper has a dog, have them take the shirt off and rub the back of their shirt all over the dog, especially between the dog's shoulder blades. Um, or do the same thing with your pants or your shorts. So when the dog comes over to you, it's gonna smell that other dog and it's gonna lean in and get more sniffs. And that's what we will want. Dogs experience the world through their nose, we experience it through our eyes. We want the dog to sniff and get to comfortable feeling and meeting people. Now, if you see the dog leaning over, so its back legs are way out here, and it's leaning over it, then that's an indication I don't feel comfortable. I'm trying to get ready to run away. When the dog's comfortable, its legs are gonna be definitely underneath it. You won't see them kind of leaning off to the side. Um, so follow the steps in the video above. I don't wanna go through that. This is already gonna be a long video. All right, so um, we talked about exercise. Um, a lot of dogs are under exercise. 95% of my clients, when I ask how much exercise the dog gets, tells me not enough, the same two word answer. Everybody knows you're not getting the dog enough exercise. We just don't have enough time. Well, during Corona, we actually do have time. So um, I have come up with some creative forms of exercise that I went over with the, uh, the guardians. Uh, the doggy Stairmaster. Now, because he can't lick up treats off the ground, instead of throwing the treat up and down the stairs, which is what I normally recommend, I would have one person at the top of the stairs, one person at the bottom of the stairs. The dog's with the person at the top, the person at the bottom says, Roman, Roman runs downstairs, and we give him a treat, and we assign a command word that means to go to the bottom of the stairs. I usually say like Cabo, Jamaica, Hawaii, a fun destination that, I don't know, for some reason, going south means, uh, or going down the stairs means south, going south for me. So then the person at the top of the stairs, once he's got the treat, hears that, and they call him up the top of the stairs, and we give him the treat, and we call it Denver, because they have a great football team. Uh, but basically, the idea is now Denver means to go up the stairs, and uh, uh, Cabo means to run down the stairs. Do we need the dog to have a command? No, but it's helpful later on if you say, uh, if you wanna just say Cabo, he runs downstairs, and then you turn around and say Mexico or Canada, he runs back up, you give him a treat. So you might get a whole down and up as one with one treat if you're here below. But at first when you do it, have one person at the top and one person at the bottom so you can have the dog go back and forth. So five minutes on the stairs is equivalent to like a half an hour, 45 minute walk, but you gotta do it inside. 
You don't have to deal with the heat or the snow or the ice or anything else. Also remember you can exercise your dog before things happen. So before going to the dog park, getting your dog some exercise is a really smart thing to do. Be going for a walk, taking your dog a certain amount of exercise. Just remember the dogs when it's exercising should have no food in their stomach. Their stomach's distended and it can actually flip over. It can be fatal. So 90 minutes after eating before you exercise. Walks are different, but anything where the dog's doing a lot of lateral movement, that can be dangerous. It can be fatal actually. Um, so uh, let's say you have a guest coming over. So maybe it's post-corona and you can have people in your house again. Somebody's like, hey, we're in the neighborhood. We're gonna stop by real quick. Well, shit, we need to set Roman up for success. Sorry, I shouldn't curse. Um, so we take Roman and then we do the stairs really quick or we play fetch whatever it is. You can also do scent games. Just Google scent games. There's a lot of different options for scent games. Uh, normally I hide the treats around the house, but in Roman's case, he can't lick them off the floor. So maybe we get a, a bait uh, object that he has to use to find with his nose when he finds it. Then you go over there and then you give him a treat and you say booty or treasure or some word that means to find it. Now, I'd like you to use, uh, come up with new funny command words. I talked in the video above about teaching the dog new tricks and commands. All new tricks and commands, I'd like you to come up with a funny word uh, for the command. Uh, my dog Max, he has a thing where he crawls on the ground like a snake. And I thought, well, worm, that's the that's a usual na unusual name. Well, nobody laughs for a worm. So I changed it to sneaky. Now I say sneaky, he drops down and he crawls across the floor and people think it's funny as hell. So if you come up with those funny command words that are little inside jokes between you and your family and your friends, and people come over and you're laughing and the guests are laughing every time the dog does those things, that makes the dog want to do those. It also brightens the mood up. So I'd like you to come up with a list of the official command words that you have, because um, a lot of times people are unaware. We say come and here and come here and come here and over here and here boy and here girl. That's a lot of things for the dog to remember. That can add to stress. So if we all say come or here, that's only one word the dog has to remember. That sets them up for success. That accelerates their learning, allows more confidence, and helps the dog feel better. Now, um, so uh, the forms of exercise, create, uh, creative forms of exercise, the doggy stairmaster, hiding treats around the house. I'd also like you to check into uh, with your vet and see if he can use a Kong filled with peanut butter. Since you float, uh, uh, float his food, essentially is what you're calling it, what I call it, um, make his food wet. I'm guessing you probably can use peanut butter. And uh, a lot of times you use peanut butter in the Kong and you freeze the Kong, it's harder to get out of it. So those are nice things that you could do to help the dog have, uh, keep the dog occupied and stimulated mentally as well as physically. Using the nose is very draining. Um, also on walks, letting the dog sniff the ground is really important. A lot of us were so worried about getting back home, we stopped them from sniffing, but dogs burn more energy on a walk by sniffing than they do from walking. So your goal should be to get your dog to sniff as much as possible. Now, because some of the dogs are reactive, I would maybe pick and choose times when there aren't gonna be a lot of people around, so that way the dog can feel more relaxed and not have to worry about people uh, coming around the corner. All right, now um, a couple of housekeeping things. Remember, anything your dog is doing when you pet is what you're specifically rewarding, and this includes unbalanced states of mind like fear, stress, anxiety, which I think per certainly are impacting Roman. I saw his guardians reach over multiple times and pet him when he was nervous or anxious. So if you see what we call efficiency of movement, that jumpy twitterness, twitchiness or snapping the head around, that's an illustration of cortisol, the stress hormone in the dog's blood. If you see the tail is tucked up against the anus, uh, the ears are really pinned far back. Um, he's whining, whimpering, breathing heavy. There's a lot of signals that can indicate I'm uncomfortable. Make sure we're not petting him. You can lay your hand on him if you need to comfort him. But a better thing to do is distract him with that focus exercise in the video above or increasing the distance between him and whatever he's reacting to. That's the best thing that you can do. Uh, is increasing the distance. Okay, so anything a dog is doing when you pet is what you're specifically rewarding, and this includes unbalanced behaviors as well as positive things, which we'll talk about with petting and purpose and celebrating or passive training here in a minute. But also, anything uh, if you uh, anything a dog does in your presence that you don't specifically disagree with is looked at as having your seal of approval. So not saying no is very similar to saying yes in the dog world. So if you do want to disagree with the dog, disagree right away. Now with Roman, be careful of your tone and your mannerisms because he is an anxious dog because of the cortisol in his blood. So for him, you probably have to use a much lower level of disagreement than with the other dogs. Um, okay. So uh, let me see, what else? Um, uh, good attention, bad attention, same thing. So when we had, one, uh, the dogs were barking at the guys that were working in the yard, every time the guardian said no or stop, that's rewarding for the dogs, but it's the opposite of what the guardians are trying to accomplish. Remember, dogs learn through repetition, consistency, and good timing. You have three seconds to correct your reward. So if the dog, if you come home and within that three seconds, the dog's jumping up and down and you're saying, calm down, the dog thinks calm down means spaz out and jump up and down, because that's what I'm doing when I hear the command word. So when I give a dog a command, I say twice. I say sit. If the dog sits, then I give it a treat or I pet it, and then I say sit a second time. 
The first time to tell it what to do, the second time to tell it why I'm rewarding or reinforcing the behavior. And that second time is the most important time for them to learn when they're learning or to hear it when they're learning. That's what syncs it together. A lot of us say, sit, good dog. Come, good boy. Uh, you know, or you know, the dog's name or whatever it is. Remember, they hear the first word you say. So make sure the first word you say is the command word. And also be careful how you say it. One of the guardians was saying, focus. And the other guardian said, focus. That makes it two different command words to a dog. So however you want to say it is fine. Just make sure everybody's saying it the same way. Okay, um, let me see. We also uh, uh, we talked about rules. Now, a lot of times when we have a dog that's fearful or a rescue dog, we feel like we're going to take away all rules and if you've had it rough, we're going to make it easy for you. But a lack of rules often stresses dogs out because they want to contribute and they, they don't see anybody enforcing rules. They get the impression there's no one's in charge. And they're like, well, I have to contribute. I guess I should be the leader, but I'm not really prepared to be the leader, but okay, I'll do that. And nobody listens to me. Now I get more stressed and it becomes this vicious cycle. So the more rules that you could have actually helps the dog see you acting like a leader and that kind of shrinks their world. And so they start feeling more comfortable and confident because uh, they don't have to worry about what's going on on the other side of the fence or what that sound was or all the rest of these things, these boogeymen in their mind, brains. And they see the humans are handling things. They're like, if there's a problem, my humans are going to take care of that. I'm there to support them if they need it, but they seem to have the situation well at hand. And so the more that you enforce rules this way, the more confident the dog can be. Um, sometimes restricting and limiting things, like I said, is very uh, comforting and calming for the dogs. So one of the first rules I suggest is not allowing the dogs in the furniture. And this is an issue because some of the dogs actually posture over the furniture and sometimes they try to take lap space and things like that. So what we do is we just make all the furniture off limits except for the bed. Uh, and, and for the bed, they have to get up when you give them permission to the bed and they go to the part of the bed that you're willing to share. If they don't like it, there's a whole lot of floor for them. So basically, um, uh, uh, I always like to, and you can order those X mats on Amazon, order one for each cushion. You can try to police it yourself, but it takes a lot of time and effort when you leave the room, they jump up there, they're practicing that old way. Remember, we wanna completely remove access to the old way while we're training the new way. Um, so order those X mats, put them on all, and it takes about two or three months for the dogs to get out of a habit. I have videos on my website to teach dogs to go to the dog bed on command. If you don't know how to do that, I can't find it, message me, but you can go to doggoneproblems.com, click on where it says dog training tips. On the right side of the page, there's a box that says, uh, a search box, just type in uh, whatever the word is that you're looking for, and all these videos will come up. Uh, so basically, the idea is, we want the dogs to be uh, calm and relaxed before we reward them for things. Um, if the dog is barking or worked up and we pet them, we're going to, again, reinforce the thing that we don't actually want. So make sure that you're uh, paying attention to that. We'll talk about that for passive training and petting with a purpose here in a minute. Now, um, uh, let me see, what else? Um, uh, I mentioned the video above, but make sure that you are taking turns. I want you guys to really focus on this stuff that I'm going over in this video for about a month. And once you've got the rules in place and the dogs are petting with a purpose, passive, celebrating and all the rest of that stuff, that's when I want you to start teaching the dogs some new tricks and commands. So remember, each week, one of the humans takes over and they're going to teach each dog separately the same trick. And then all week long, we're going to practice it for all the dogs. Then the next week, the other guardian takes over and they teach a different trick. And make sure they're easy at first and get to more complicated ones as you're going. But then all week long, you're, all the dogs are doing these things. So make sure you have a fun command word for all these things. Um, also, every once in a while, pull out a treat. I would like every, to every day grab about 10 pieces of crack, the chicken, the beef liver, or whatever the treats are, something you can pull apart if you need to. And then basically go to different, uh, pull one out with the dogs not watching. When the dogs not paying attention, say, come. Whoever comes first and sits down and gets the treat, whoever comes second and third doesn't get anything reward them for listening to you. After a while, they'll start listening to you and obeying you faster because that's what gets the reward. But if they're all gonna get a reward anyways, there's no point in, in, in busting my tail because I'm gonna get a, the same reward if I'm first or last. So why not just take your time? Um, all right, so uh, other rules we talked about, sitting at the door. Go to the door, tell the dog to sit once. If it doesn't sit within three seconds, sit down nearby, wait for one minute, and then go back to the door and tell the dog to sit again. If it doesn't sit within three seconds this time, I walk away for two minutes, next time for four minutes, eight minutes, and so on. And as soon as the dog sits, open the door, let it out. And same principle about the come treat. If you tell the dogs to sit and one of the three dogs sits, let that dog go out and close the door and don't let the other, three do other two dogs out. Pay based on performance. I would do this for the kennel, for any doorway in the house, um, any, you know, and so sitting is a more supportive position for dogs. So if you tell the dog you have to sit in order to achieve this thing, remember that's called a premac. And so that one less desirable behavior achieves you a more desirable behavior. Eventually they'll go sit at the door saying, I'd like to go outside, please. I'd also like you to keep them out of the kitchen and out of the uh, living room, uh, uh, the kitchen when you're cooking and around for any people while they're eating. Now I didn't get a chance to demonstrate that with you guys. Um, so I want you to go to my website and search for either the word invisible or kitchen. And there's videos 
explain how to do that. If you have any questions with that, let me know. I didn't go over the escalating consequences I talk about there because uh, I think just uh, a Roman is just so fearful. I don't want you to really do any of those things uh, around him because I think that it, it set him off. You probably do the third one walking towards him if you can find that video that lets you know. But just mimic what I show you in the video and message me if you have any questions. Now we also talked about petting with a purpose and passive training, which I've talked about in this video a couple times. Petting with a purpose is just what it sounds. It's petting your dog for a reason. So the dog comes up and nudges you, it's telling you what to do. Remember, leaders tell, followers ask. So he comes up and tells you what to do, you pet him, you're like, yeah, we're, you're my boss. Well, if the dog thinks this is your boss, then it also has to protect you. That means it's responsible for you. And then when you don't listen to the dog when it barks at people and you go and talk to people anyways, that stresses your dog out even more, you're amplifying the problem. So instead, when the dog nudges you, tell it to sit. If it sits within three seconds, pet it under its chin and say the word sit. Then you can pet your dog anywhere you want, except for up here, especially for Roman. To avoid petting him here and avoid petting Roman if you see his tail tucked, his ears backed, or his body mechanics say that I'm uncomfortable. You know he's scared and try to avoid, remember to come up with a command word for a word that means you're saying it's okay because the guardians both say it's okay when he gets scared and that can actually create a command word that it's okay means to get scared. So instead we want to come up with a word that just means you're saying the wrong word and it's a watch word for each people internally just like the ones we have for petting with purpose past training which I'll go over in a second. So if you want to pet your dog or your dog is initiating a pet from you, then you tell the dog to sit. If it's already sitting here, you tell it to sit here or here. It has to do something to change its state or lay down. Don't practice shake. And if it does sit or lay down within that three second window, you reach over and pet it on its chin and say sit or down or whatever your word is and pet it for as much or as little as you want. If you say sit and it doesn't sit within three seconds, lean back, watch some TV, read some emails on your phone, play a game, read a magazine, do something else, show the dog, I'm living my best life. I have 11 other things I could be doing. I wanted to pet you, but you couldn't be bothered to do the smallest thing you do as a dog and sit, so I can't be bothered to pet you. After a while, that will motivate the dog to want to listen, and the dog's gonna recognize, I can no longer tell the people what to do, because when I tell them, nothing happens. But they tell me what to do, and I do it, I get rewarded. Maybe it's good to actually listen to humans. And after a while, the dog will recognize this and start coming and sitting in front of you to prepay for the attention. When it does, make sure you do reach over and pet it, otherwise it's gonna go back to doing it uh, the other way. Um, if you get in the habit of petting with a purpose, every time you pet your dog, it increases the dog's respect for you as a leader, which will help with the insecurity. It boosts the dog's confidence, which is also gonna help with the insecurity. It's gonna uh, help the dog practice basic obedience and listening to you, which also will help with the insecurity. And last thing, it makes your pets more valuable because you're not giving them away willy-nilly, the dog has to earn them. And again, boost of confidence. It truly becomes a gift. If you get in a habit, it'll take you guys about two months to do that. But after about two months, every time you pet your dog, it becomes a micro dog training session. You've been doing it for the wrong way unintentionally. Now we're gonna do it for the right way. All right, now I use the watchword of paycheck. That means I suspect someone's petting without a purpose. So if somebody comes in the room and says paycheck and I'm petting a dog, I stop petting the dog even if I did it right. I tell the dog to sit. If it sits, I pet it on her chin, say sit, and I, then I say, actually I asked the dog to sit. When you rang the doorbell, you stood up and I continued petting. And if he doesn't sit, remember, playing hard to get works great for dog training. Doesn't sit, you find other things to do. Um, like I said, he'll start prepaying for the attention. The next, the other thing we talked about was passive training. And passive training is waiting for the dog to organically offer you the behavior they want, recognize it within that three second window, and marking it by saying the command word. So if I point at somebody in our puppy class and say, celebrate, that means you just missed an opportunity. Your dog just did something that we like and you're not petting or rewarding it for doing so. So if I'm just kind of hanging out and somebody says, celebrate, I'm gonna turn it as fast as I can and start petting that dog. And then I'm gonna look at the dog's position and I'm gonna figure out what it did and then I'm gonna say the word. If it's standing, it's pretty obvious it's came and so I'm petting it and saying, come, just once. Don't say it multiple times. If it's sitting, laying down, it's pretty obvious. Name all your individual toys. All balls can be balls, all bones can be bones. I know we don't have a lot of toys and if you wanna work on the toy issue, let me know. We can definitely work on that and uh, stop uh, the dog from being protective of the toys. It's, I've helped a lot of people with that. Um, and so, uh, so after a while, the dog will start recognizing that sitting, coming, laying down, these are the things that get my human's attention. And these are the things the dog will start doing to offer to get your attention, like prepaying for the attention. And so now you're rewarding for the dog for the things you want and motivating the dog to do the things you want. And that way, instead of having you to convince or ask the dog multiple times, the dog's doing it automatically on its own. It really is awesome. Um, so name all your toys. I would come up with a separate word for each dog to go uh, to eat their food. Um, and so I say uh, a grub, feast, and lasagna are the three words I use. A lot of my clients say sushi or steak or whatever. Name your favorite restaurant, whatever you want. So when you do that, every time that that dog eats for four months, you say chimichanga, that's the dog's word. 
So then later on, you may have the dog sit and then you guys eat, remember the humans need to eat first, something in five more bites. Then you have the dogs come over one at a time and eat one at a time. And when one dog's eating, the other dog has to stay behind the line. And you can use the thing in the invisible or the video for invisible or kitchen and you know, help the dog practice that. Now you're helping the dogs practice a little self-restraint, which helps with their confidence in you as a leader. You're also helping the dog that's eating, recognizing that the humans are keeping the other dogs off my back. A lot of times dogs wolf their food down real quick because they want to go stand next to the other dog to try to intimidate them and get their food. Well, if you eliminate that possibility, I'm going to feed Roman first. And when Roman's done, when he walks away, wait, we have to get him out of his chair because Megas off he is. But when he gets done, he has to leave the kitchen. And when he gets done, the next dog comes in and eats. When that dog's in the kitchen eating or wherever, the other dogs are not allowed to come in. So the dogs see that we're not letting them come and sweat the other dog. We're not letting, and we're letting the dog that's eating know, I got you back. And the more that that happens, the more confident the dog has that the humans are taking care of things. I don't have to take care of things by myself. Um, let me see. Um, I, I would like to come back and work with Roman a little bit more, especially, and I'd like to work on the, the toy uh, resource guarding issue. But I'd like you guys to really focus on this stuff for a month. A lot of people put, pick up a lot of tasks. I'm guilty of this myself in my office. Uh, and I have 12 tasks going on, and I do like 5% of each one a day. I don't make any progress. I want you guys to really focus on the stuff we went over in this session and really establish it and get good habits. It'll take you about two months to get a habit of petting with a purpose, passively training, enforcing those rules, increasing the exercise, and all that fun stuff. And once you do, then give me, let me know and we can come back and we work on the guardian of the toys. And if I end up getting Laura involved in us, uh, the woman that I was talking about that specializes in fearful dogs, I think she would be wonderful to work with Roman. There's probably a whole lot of tricks that she has up her sleeve. I work with uh, dogs across the spectrum. She's kind of a specialist. So let me know about that uh, when we get into maybe uh, August or September and then we can look at exploring that. If she come and joins our staff, we'd love to introduce you, et cetera. Okay, um, now uh, remember, exercise is gonna multiply or amplify. It's gonna make it easier for you to fix the problems you have or if it's gonna amplify the problems you have. So remember to find that, identify that right amount of exercise so you're getting the right amount of updance on the stairs before a walk or a guest comes over or the trash men come or the guys put in the fence or whatever the case may be. All right, um, now if you have any questions on this or anything else, please don't hesitate. If I don't hear from you, I assume that means everything's going great. So please text me or call me if you have any questions. All right, well, this is uh, Roman, and I've forgotten the other two dogs, uh, Daisy and uh, Raya's Roman Act of Success. Good for me. It's a Friday. I can actually remember. You should be wearing red. Remember to support your healthcare workers on Friday by wearing red. Wash your hands, and for God's love, please wear a mask. I have one in my pocket. I swear, I'm only doing it because I'm doing this video. The decisions that you make can decide how long Corona lasts, so please be responsible and be courteous to your fellow man. All right, public service announcement over. My name's David, and this is their Roadmap to Success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog. Only sometimes you mean it.